This video supported in part by From the moment I cracked open this new LEGO Atari 2600 set, there's been one thing about the build that has drawn my eye and made me really eager to build it. The cartridge, the console, all that's cool, but it's this, that iconic Atari joystick reproduced in LEGO bricks. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I'm John, I am a Gen X Grown Up, and the classic CX40 Atari joystick is probably one of the most iconic controllers from any console ever in the history of video gaming. It may not be the most ergonomically well-designed, it may not be the most resilient, because I broke many of them, but this joystick, this simple stick and a red button with a little orange ring around it, has over the years come to represent video gaming as an industry. I mean, if you see this thing, you know this means gaming, in particular probably classic gaming. So that in part at least is why I've been so looking forward to putting that particular part of this Lego set together. This is step 15 in the instruction manual. And that's quite a leap I know from where we were in the manual the last time I shared one of these videos, but that's because I've completed the console and I'm working on a larger video to compare that console to a real Atari 2600. In this video though, we're putting together that CX40 joystick to look and see if it lives up to my anticipation. Construction of this stick has three main phases. First, there's the assembly of the interior mechanism that allows the stick to move. I'll give you a closer look at that a little bit later. Then there's the work to around that build the shape and studless exterior of the joystick that you're going to hold in your hand. And finally, construction of the joystick shaft itself that then inserts through the opening in the top of the body into that mechanism that we created in step one. It all comes together in about 15 minutes or so, and now I'm proud to introduce to you the LEGO Atari joystick. And here he is. Completely understandable if you just need to take a couple of seconds to soak in the beauty that is that CX40 joystick design reproduced in Lego bricks. It's really a sight to behold. A very simple model, actually. It has this tubing with a little plug on the end. We'll take a look at it in one second. The button itself is non-functional, but maybe the coolest feature, if you would say that, of, the, uh, of this Lego model is that the joystick actually moves. This is really neat. Let me show you the design inside. Inside the assembly is just this central Technic piece, and it just has these little rubbery kind of bumpers around it that attach into the Lego, and that's what allows for the joystick to move around. No gears, nothing fancy, just some little rubber grommets. And then the shaft of the stick plugs right into the middle of that assembly and gives you that regular Atari joystick action. And feels pretty good, actually. It just adds that little extra bit of kind of nostalgic reminiscence to a toy like this to be able to at least grab it and pretend I'm moving a tank or fighting a dragon, you know? One odd thing worth pointing out with all the studless design of all the rest of this Lego set is that the bottom of the joystick looks largely unfinished, but this is complete with everything else, like the cartridges and the console, just completely smoothed with all those tiles. It's odd to me that they left, like I can even see some of the assembly and the odd colors inside of there that were part of the, the initial put together. And I, it just stands out. It doesn't bother me because when you're standing it up and displaying it, you don't see that at all. But it seems out of place. Like somebody else designed the joystick and decided they didn't have to polish the bottom and just leave it like that. Thing of beauty though it may be, the real litmus test is to compare this to a genuine CX40 Atari joystick. And right away you can see the similarities and the differences are subtle, but they're there. They're more pronounced. More pronounced maybe than the cartridges. Somewhat smaller overall, as you can see, just a little bit shorter and a little bit narrower in fact, just a bit smaller. Now that doesn't make it not feel good in the hand, but you can tell it's a bit smaller. It feels like, I don't know, 90% the size of an original Atari joystick, which is fine for a toy, a collectible like this. You're not actually playing a game with it. I really quite like how they went out of the way to preserve this stair-stepping effect, how the top of the stick is thicker, and then there on the bottom it gets quite smaller, which is not as easy as it may sound when building in Lego, because you really have about a third of a brick height to deal with whenever you're working with differences in height or depth. I think in this top-down view, you can really get a sense of just how slightly smaller the Lego version of the joystick is. And by the way, I should say, don't count off too many points for not having the Atari logo on the Lego version. This was not always on the CX40 joystick. This one is just inspired by a version of the joystick before this logo was added. I really want to point out though, just what a good job they did. Not stickers, these are printed little arc tiles here to replicate this just absolute 
iconic trademark dots and arrows around the circumference of the joystick. Now, I'm a little disappointed that the top one doesn't say top, which is the norm on joysticks like this. I would like for that to have been there, but all in all, the custom printing here really sells this joystick at a glance. You get the orange little dotted arrows and the big red button that really, really just sell it. Now, in order to have a functional joystick, you'll see that this rubberized boot was majorly reinterpreted. You have an upside down dish here, uh, in order to have the stick be able to rotate inside of its socket, whereas on the joystick, of course, you have this nice big rubber boot that comes off if you're playing Yars Revenge too hard, I can attest to. And while we're looking at differences and similarities, I can't leave out this classic Atari 9-pin plug that's been reproduced in LEGO here at the end of this cable. Yeah, it doesn't have nine pins, it has two. Well, why? Because that's the shape of the port on the back of the 2600 LEGO console. The tiny differences required to translate to brick and the little compromises not Withstanding. I think all in all, this Lego joystick is definitely an iconic representation. No one's going to glance at this on a shelf and go, gee, I wonder what that's supposed to be. At a glance, you might think it's a real CX40 joystick, and understandably so, because it really looks nice. It's not until you put it in your hand that you start to feel that it's not quite exactly what you remember, but by then, you're already probably looking at the other parts of this Lego Atari 2600, and you're wowed by the rest of the presentation. As I wind up this series looking at this LEGO Atari, I'll tell you that throughout the process, I keep thinking to myself, how can I build on this and make it bigger and better? I should go to BrickLink and buy enough parts to make a, a second joystick or build some custom cartridges. That's a rabbit hole that I could easily get stuck in. What I will tell you is that I have completed construction of the basic set. I'm working on a video for that centipede cartridge and I'm going to compare and contrast the LEGO console with a real genuine four switch button from the era. And we're gonna find out just how much attention to detail was paid in reproducing my favorite childhood console into Lego bricks. I hope you're enjoying this series. If you are, I would invite you to check out this playlist in the corner that includes all of our coverage of the Lego Atari 2600 from when it was announced or rumored all the way up until now and through the end. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.